Focus question one. Who was involved in the Mile Creek Massacre? The Mile Creek Massacre involved the killing of 28 Aboriginal Australians by 11 stockmen. On the 7th of June, 1838, a posse consisting of six men arrived at Bingurum Station. They were on their way to go and work at the Mile Creek Station. Two men from the Mile Creek Station happened to see them there. They were the ones that described them as a posse. In the afternoon of the 10th of June, 1838, about 11 men, including the posse of six, set off with about 28 Aboriginal men and women to, as they put it, scare them a bit. These men were John Johnstone, Charles Kilmeister, John Blake, John Russell, James Oates, Edward Foley, James Hawkins, James Parry, Charles Lamb, George Palliser, and Charles Toulouse. John Anderson witnessed them setting off and coming back, but when they came back, they came back without a single Aboriginal. The 11 men of ex-convicts and convicts had murdered every single Aboriginal in cold blood. However, Five Aboriginals escaped their doom. Two were women left behind to please the men, and three children had hidden as soon as the convicts from the Bingram station had arrived at the Mile Creek station. The station hut manager, John Anderson, decided not to report the event until he found that the massacre had been planned by the assigned convicts a week before it occurred. It was also found that the men wanted the Aboriginals dead for two reasons. One, because they had the power to do so, and two, because there was a bit of a land skirmish going on between the Aboriginals and the convicts. William Hobbs, the station superintendent, found out about the killings and then decided to question Charles Kilmeister and John Anderson. Kilmeister denied everything and said he had been looking for stray cannon. And John Anderson didn't say a word. Focus question two. What were the consequences of the Mile Creek Massacre? After William Hobbs had questioned Anderson and Kilmeister, he then went looking for the site of the massacre. He later said that when he found the site, he thought it horrible beyond description and had vomited more than once. He then wrote a letter to Henry Dengar, the owner of the station, and reported the incident to Magistrate Denny Day. A trial was then held in November 1838. In the first trial, the men who killed the Aboriginals were being accused of the murder of an Aboriginal man named Daddy. John Anderson and William Hobbs sided with General Attorney Plunkett to punish the men for their crime. As a consequence of this, they were released from service at the Mile Creek Station by Henry Dagner, a supporter of the defence, and they were put in protective custody because of the threats the civilians in the court were throwing at them. The men accused of murder were found not guilty by the jury after a long battle. However, a second trial was requested by General Attorney Plunkett for the murder of an Aboriginal child named Charlie. His real name, unknown to the court. The men were kept as prisoners as both sides of the court prepared for another battle. This court war went on for hours and hours until the jury made a decision. As a consequence of their actions, seven out of the eleven accused men were to be hung on the 18th of December, 1838. These men were James Oates, Charles Kilmeister, Edward Foley, John Russell, John Johnstone, William Hawkins and James Perry.
government hope that the outcome of the trials sent a message to the public. Do not kill Aboriginal men and women, or you will be hanged. However, the message that was truly sent was only kill Aboriginals secretly and out of sight of the government. This message was one of the greatest consequences of the Mile Creek Massacre and its trials. Focus question three. How did the public respond to the Mile Creek Massacres? When the stockmen and convicts were hanged, the public were in outrage. They didn't see how it was a crime to kill a black man. To them, it was the same as killing a rabbit. Aboriginals were just pests that needed to be exterminated. The first trial was seen as a victory to the white community. This was because the public opinion had placed a heavy weight on the jury's final decision and had forced them to declare the prisoners not guilty. Because of that final decision, the white people said that the jury had implicitly allowed the killing of black people. Then, once again, the public were in outrage when a second trial was requested for the killing of another black. General Attorney Plunkett had made himself an enemy of the public and, in the public's eye, a traitor because he had sided with black people over white. Papers. It was reported that the white people had made up more secret means of ridding themselves of the black news, such as poisoning them through their food and water. The newspaper, the Sydney Morning Herald, said the whole gang of black animals are not worth the money the colonists will have to pay for printing their silly court documents. We have already wasted too much time. The Mile Creek Massacre turned out to be a turning point in Australian history. This is because the white Europeans suddenly had to be more discreet about killing black people. And although they still weren't treated properly, the black people were suddenly becoming less of a pest and more of a human in the government's eyes.